Most of us will only dream of flying one of today's hot jet fighters. The pilots who do this for a living fly their aircraft to the outer edges of the envelope to wring the last ounce of performance from them. In a combat situation, that can be the difference between doing the shooting and being shot at. Well, you or I will probably never fly one of those hot airplanes. There are lessons we can learn from those who do. Fighter pilots have to know how close to the edge they can go without falling over and leaving a smoking hole in the ground. So do we in our lesser performing airplanes. The speeds and the forces acting on the aircraft and our bodies are different, but the principles are the same. We absolutely have to know the corners of the flight envelope of the aircraft we fly, and some of this we can discover on our own. For example, the aircraft flight manual is the first place to look for its performance parameters. It will tell us many things we need to know, like the maximum gear and flap extension speeds, takeoff and landing distances over 50 feet, and our airplane's crosswind limitations. Generally called demonstrate a crosswind component, it means that a professional test pilot has demonstrated that the aircraft could handle a certain velocity of crosswinds. But like much of the flight information contained in the manuals, most have been performed by professional pilots who test fly for a living. So always keep in mind whether you have the ability to consistently perform as well. Keep in mind too that every airplane is affected by how much weight it is carrying and how that weight is distributed. A center of gravity too far forward or too far aft of its approved envelope can make the aircraft uncontrollable and that is definitely one component of the envelope that you should never exceed. Exploring the envelope is best done under actual flight conditions, but don't do this on your own. Solicit the help of an instructor who is familiar with the type of aircraft you fly. You should explore the airplane's still air turn radius at a given rate of turn. Part of this exercise also includes identifying the stalling speed at that rate of turn and what the approach to the stall feels like. And of course, we have to know what happens if we do stall. We also have to know the best glide speed if the engine quits at altitude and the rate of descent that should produce. This will help us identify how much ground we can cover so, if needed, we can quickly pick an emergency landing spot that's within reasonable gliding range. Practice this from a safe altitude until you know exactly how the airplane will perform in this condition. Twin engine aircraft have their own envelope. One critical corner of that envelope is encountered when an engine quits on takeoff. We have to be able to react quickly enough to clean up the airplane manage the power on the remaining engine and climb safely away at the best single engine climb speed. We should know the effects of the drag from an unfeathered propeller, whether the airplane will be able to maintain the level flight at all or whether an unfeathered propeller will push it beyond the flight envelope. All of these factors help to determine our airplane's flight envelope. The time to think about these factors is well before the flight and asking what if, not in the few seconds after something goes wrong. Asking what if is a time-honored exercise that identifies possible hazards before they result in accidents. Asking what if helps these fighter pilots. The answers will help us define our airplane's flight envelope and let us stay within it while getting maximum performance from the airplane. And we must stay within the envelope. Peeling back the corners of the envelope is an occupation reserved for highly experienced test pilots who are fully aware of the risks involved. And they have spent years asking what if. Most of us have not the training, nor the skills to reach beyond the envelope, but we can use what training and skills we do have to stay just inside it. We should always remember that we have our own personal flight envelopes beyond which we, like the airplane, can operate safely. We can go to 100% of our abilities, not beyond. What if we use up 95% of our abilities when everything is going smoothly? Is the remaining 5% enough to handle an emergency? It's something we should always consider. I'm Mike Dwaron, inviting you to return next week to fly with us through the overcast.